Good afternoon and welcome to the NSTP FACET Parent Panel Discussion. My name is James Allen Jr. and I'm a coordinator for new student transition programs here at Georgia Tech, where I specifically oversee our extended orientation program, Rec Camp. Today I'll serve as your moderator for this panel along with my colleague Cynthia Jennings, who is the Director of New Student and Transition Programs. We are so excited that you are here with us today and welcome you and your students to the Georgia Tech family. We also hope that you and your loved ones are safe during these uncertain times. To begin our panel discussion, our panelists will have the opportunity to introduce themselves. Good afternoon, my name is Colleen Riddle. Um, I serve as Associate Dean of Students within the Division of Student Life. And I'm not seeing Rosemary on the call, so we'll skip to Linda. Hello, I'm Linda Green. I'm the Director of Tutoring and Academic Support in the Office of Undergraduate Education and Faculty in the Department of Biological Sciences. Hello there, my name is Carlene Andrew. I am the Assistant Director of Student Accounts in the um, Department of Bursar and Treasury. Good afternoon, my name is Larry. I work with the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid here at Georgia Tech as the Customer Service Manager. Hi everyone, my name is Brett Hulst. I'm the Associate Director of Residence Life and I'm representing the department, excuse me, the Division of Campus Services. And thank you to all of our campus partners for being here this today. Um, as a reminder, if you have a question that has not been asked, please feel free to send a message in our anonymous chat bar within Microsoft Teams. If we do not receive many questions during this session, we will be ending early as a forewarning. We will do our very best to field all questions asked within this hour time frame. If you ask a question and we don't publish it, it is because we have already answered this question. This video will be posted in the Facet Parent Canvas later today. To begin our discussion, we start with our first question in the chat. The first question is going to be for Brett and Campus Services. The question is, I'd like to send my student a care package. What do I need to do to make sure my student receives it? Students love to get mail and how mail is delivered at Georgia Tech. We have a, a campus post office, which is part of our student center. It's in the Expo Hall this year. They're renovating our student center. So the Expo Hall, which is a portion of the student center, has the post office. Your student will have a PO box here at Georgia Tech. They will get that information through Oscar and you would mail that care package to their campus post office box. We do not accept mail in the residence halls, so um, any mail that is delivered to the residence hall will, will be returned to sender. So please make sure that you work with your student to get that mailbox information from them and then mail the care packages there. Um, if they don't have a care, um, if they don't in their mailbox as they're moving in um, or you're trying to send something now and they don't have that mailbox information, you can address it to the uh, campus post office um, and put new student with their name and they will figure that out when it gets there. Um, that information is on the Student Center website and I can include that information in a second. I'll add that to this uh, to the thread so that you can look for those instructions. Thank you so much for that answer, Brett. Uh, this next question that we have is should my child attend rec camp? And I will send myself live for this one uh, to say absolutely. Uh, and if you don't know what rec camp is, rec camp is our extended orientation program through the Office of New Student and Transition Programs, where we pride ourselves in providing activities and opportunities for your student to learn more about the Georgia Tech community as a whole, our wonderful traditions, and ultimately help aid in the transition to college life and beyond, even after rec camp is over. Uh, at the end of all of our experiences, our goal is to give students the courage to take on their college career and ultimately feel acclimated to our campus a lot more uh, before their first day. We do have one more experience left uh, for the summer to, that you could register for by July 25th, 2021, uh, and it's called Rec Camp Odyssey, which will take place August 11th through the 14th at, at a camp called Rock Eagle in Eatonton, Georgia. Uh, if you would like more information about this camp and about Red Camp in general, you can visit our website at transitionprograms.gotech.edu, where you would just need to click on Red Camp and you will see Red Camp Odyssey there uh, where you'll get more information. Um, so yeah, so definitely uh, I would register now because spots are filling up. The next question that we have is going to be, uh, how does a student get involved in undergraduate research? And I'm gonna send that one over to Linda. 
Thank you. So for undergraduate research, we encourage and hope that all students get involved with research and innovation here at Tech. So one of the first steps is to explore some of the interests in the faculty, typically in the major that the student is in, that are doing something that is the student feels passionate about. And then we encourage students to take the step to initiate conversations before or after class by dropping in on office hours or scheduling an appointment directly with the faculty member to talk about their research and to talk about opportunities for undergrads to join their lab. And that can be a varied process. It might involve um, attending a lab meeting and getting to know the other graduate and undergraduate students in the lab. We have um, research ambassadors, which are upper class students who have already um, in, enjoy the benefit of getting involved in undergraduate research and serve as peer mentors to help guide students through the process. And thank you so much for that answer there, Linda. Uh, one second here. Computers freezing up one second. Awesome, so the next question is, do we get access to our students' grades? And I'm not seeing Rosemary on the call, so we may have to skip this one until she's able to join us. Um, but the next question is, if a student doesn't sign up for a roommate or a room, will they be assigned automatically? What's the process? Yes, so um, students, how housing works here is students um, sign up for their own space. We do not assign students to rooms. Um, they do not have to have a roommate to go through the process, but they will be asked to select a room from the rooms available based on their priority number. If they choose not to select a room um, when their priority number comes up, they will be put at the end of the list and they will be assigned a room at the end of, um, at the end of after everyone else has assigned themselves into spaces and whatever rooms are left, they will be assigned into one of those spaces. So I highly encourage students when their priority number comes up and that comes through emails that they've received through the Department of Housing to log on and just select the room they're interested in um, to, to live in. Don't have to go through the process with a roommate. You're more than welcome to go through the process with a roommate. If you do go with the roommate, whoever in the roommate pair has a higher priority number will take both folks through the process. And thank you for that answer, Brett. And while I have you here, I have another question. If we have health insurance, do we still need to pay the health fee? Yes, students who have more than four hours are enrolled in more than four hours are required to pay the health fee and that covers um, like day to day needs on campus so they can use the stamps health services to go in and you know to go to the allergy clinic or to get you know just to get a checkup for a cold or things like that. Um, there are some additional fees if you're using the health clinic as well, but um, but for, for the most part health fees will cover kind of day to day things that are happening there. I encourage you to check out their website uh, health.gotech.edu can give you more information. Health insurance is also very importance. Um, health fee does not cover major medical or large issues or even some of the services at stamps. And so you will need to have health insurance as well. There's a lot of information on the stamps web website. Once again, health.gotech.edu to give you lots of information about how the health fee is used and how health insurance, if you don't have health insurance for your kids, um, how they can get health insurance through Georgia Tech. Thank you so much for that answer there, Brett. Uh, this next question is going to be for Curlin. Uh, the question is, when will we receive the invoice for fall semester? Thank you. Um, so the we have a very unique feature on the website in the student payment portal called um, it's called um, on demand bill. So we don't actually send bills. We may send a few, um, but th that feature is um, if once your student is registered, you could automate a bill for yourself. Um, in that in the student payment portal. The deadline is the August 30th. So if your student is registered before then, you could um, create a bill or automate a bill for yourself in the student payment portal. So that's on demand. It, it picks up everything that's live, lifetime, tuition, fees, room and board, anything that's charged to the student account. And thank you so much for that answer, Carolyn. Uh, this next question is a, is a popular question that we get for Colleen. Can anyone talk about the Greek rush process? Not much information online. Sure, I can talk about it. Um, and I did just step back, um, James put a little note about the grades. Um, I know we don't have register on, um, but I did uh, put a little note about uh, grades. Um, and I, I'll talk about that real quick um, before I jump to the Greek recruitment. But um, grades are protected by FERPA, which is the federal um, 
uh, Academic Rights Privacy Act that kind of covers um, students' privacy when they're in college, um, which may be different depending on where you went to school and that sort of thing. Um, but grades are not something that you will have access to. And so um, it's gonna have to be something that you establish with your student about how you will kind of have that conversation with them, if they're just going to let you know when grades um, grades are posted, when they have information about that. Um, but that's something that you have to have a dialogue with your student about. So, um, but um, jumping over to the Greek recruitment. So Greek recruitment um, is going to be starting very soon um, this summer. Um, Fraternity and Sorority Life um, is a department that kind of oversees Greek recruitment. Um, there are four councils that a student can um, kind of go through rush or recruitment for. And so depending on which council they're interested in, um, each one will have a slightly different process. Um, the, you said that there wasn't much information on the website. Um, each council is doing it a little bit differently. Some of them are hybrid, some of them are in person. Um, and so um, I'll, I'll drop a few links and some more information in the chat just so you'll be able to kind of go back and see what that is after we get done talking. But um, the best way to kind of get involved in recruitment would be to sign up for recruitment. And I'll drop the link in the chat for that. Um, that way you get in um, to the system, you'll get all the updates, and then you'll be getting updates as um, the students kind of plan that process. But that typically happens um, the week before classes start. So um, if someone is interested, and then some of them have kind of a more kind of a rolling recruitment process. But I'll drop some more information in the chat that way you'll have it after we get done. All right, we thank you for those answers there, Colleen. Uh, this next question is going to be for Brett and Campus Services. The question is, while my student's dorm is co-ed, I noticed each floor is single sex. Are there restrictions about socializing within the dorm? Georgia Tech does not, uh, Georgia Tech Housing does not have restrictions on visitation generally. So uh, students are allowed to visit other folks and have guests, uh, you know, on, on whenever they would like. I will say there's a caveat to that as we start school this year, we are still in, in sort of being overly cautious uh, with COVID still happening and with the new variants showing up. We are going to be a little more um, um, careful with our visitation policies. So the first month of school, we were limiting visitation uh, between buildings. So but students in individual buildings. So let's say, for instance, you live in Hanson Hall, you could visit any floor in Hanson if you live in Hanson. However, if you live in Hanson, you cannot go into any other residence halls. So um, that will be for at least for the first month of school while we kind of uh, stay on top of, of, of what's going on with COVID and making sure that folks are getting vaccinated and getting tested. And um, so that will be a little bit different at the start of the year. But generally, for the most part, students can visit within their residence hall. There are no, um, you don't have to sign in to go to other floors or things like that. Some floors are locked. Um, you'd have to have a key or have a buzz card access for those. But generally, folks within a building would be able to um, access other floors in the building. Thank you for that answer, Brett. Um, I have another question kind of around uh, LLCs here, but the question is, my student has expressed interest in restarting a field hockey club. How is this supported and is it reasonable for a first year in an LLC to take this on? So I will say, yes, it is feasible if they want to, to do that. I'm going to turn it over to Colleen to talk a little bit about how Engage works and how, how student organizations work. But as an, as a member of an LLC, you have plenty of opportunity to stay involved in other things on campus. So if you're looking for, for um, fraternity or sorority involvement, if you're looking for other clubs and organizations, student government, anything like that, you can definitely do that on top of being an LLC. LLCs do have a lot of really great stuff going on. They will take a little bit of time, but not so much time that you can't in, enjoy and be involved in other activities on campus. But Colin, if you want to talk a little bit about how you might <clears throat> use the club. Yeah, sure. Um, I could talk about that. So um, typically, if you are interested in starting a club, um, what I would recommend is um, reaching out to the Engage office, which Brett mentioned, um, reaching out to either Victoria Redman or Quinn um, Foster and seeing um, kind of just what the involvement is and just kind of talking about it a little bit with them on the front end to see if it's something that you want to be involved in and kind of um, develop longer term. Um, typically, you have to find about nine other people that would be interested in that same club. Um, you have to develop a constitution, bylaws, um, have different levels of leadership. Um, once you develop the constitution and bylaws, you go um, and present that to the, to, to the office as well. So um, there's different steps involved. So it's not necessarily, hey, I want to do this and I'm going to get my friends together. So there are some different steps if you want to be a formal kind of group with that um, and I'll drop the link in the chat about how um, 
how you would go about that if someone is interested in it. Um, I've always encouraged, I mean, I've been at TAG for 15 years and I've always encouraged students, like if they're um, to look at the clubs and organizations and if there's something that is not there that they're interested in, it's always kind of cool to develop something like that. So um, I would always encourage that. Maybe not in your first semester, maybe kind of like get your feet wet kind of a thing and maybe in the spring or something like that or, or the, you know, kind of the following year, maybe take that on just to kind of get your, um, kind of get settled in classes and, and that sort of thing. And we thank you for those answers, both Brett and Colleen. Uh, this next question may be for Curlin. Uh, the question is, how can we have independent access to account and payment information to arrange for overseas transfers for payment or tuition? Okay, thank you. So um, the student will be able to give you access as an authorized user in the, the student payment portal. Um, the student will um, sign up with this whoever email address it could be a third party or the parent and then the parent take it from there to add their own information and have their separate access um, at any time that they choose to access the account to look at bills print bills or make a payment all right thank you for that answer carolyn uh, this next question is going to go right back to uh, brett and campus services the question is if my son did not find a roommate in roommate searching period how how a room roommate in a room are assigned to him? Yes, so you, in our process, you do not have to go through the process with a roommate. Many students choose not to do that. Um, you will, your, your, your student will select their room based on their priority number. So if you're going through as a single student in the process, you will place yourself in any room that you're interested in that has a single space in it. So that's a room with just one space available or with two spaces available. And then, um, Either the student then will then have a roommate that they because they've selected to put themselves in a room with someone else or someone else will select to put themselves in that same room um, with the student. So then those two folks will become roommates and they'll have each other's information and they can reach out to each other and see how things are going. We work with all of our roommate pairs, if, whether they have, know each other or don't. We have a roommate agreement process that we begin at the beginning of the year to start some communication about how space is shared. And so um, this, the process is exactly the same if you have a roommate or don't have a roommate you will select the room based on your priority number that information has come through the housing um an email from housing that tells you when your your time ticket opens up so that you can start going into the housing portal to select the room um and and then they will go in the process and, and sign up for that room so don't have to go through with a roommate if you do that's great you'll go through with whoever has the highest priority number both both folks would um but going through as an individual student is perfectly fine as well Definitely. And thank you for that answer there, Brett. Uh, these next cool qu two questions are going to be for Linda. Uh, the first question is, where does a student get tutoring? Great, thank you. So there are a number of different opportunities for tutoring on campus. Um, the largest one is my office, which is the second floor of the Clough Building. And this coming year, we'll bring back the majority of our in-person tutoring, but maintain some virtual offerings through Blue Jeans, so students will continue to be able to have that flexibility um, for their late night weekend tutoring, if they're commuting, or in a different time zone. There are a couple other places on campus that offer tutoring. The Office for Minority Services has their own tutoring. The College of Engineering has some in-house tutoring, particularly for some of their middle and upper level courses. So we hope that students can take advantage of the variety of opportunities both for individual and group tutoring, which is another dimension of our services that are both in the dorms as well as in classrooms across campus. Students can get more access at tutoring.gotech.edu and then links to some of those other programs I mentioned are at success.gotech.edu. I can drop both of those in the chat. What was the second question, James? Yes, yeah, so and thank you for that answer there, Linda. The second question is, is there testing assistance provided to students? So we do have the Office of Disability Services that um, will address testing needs for students with disabilities and can work more directly with them. I'm not as privy to any of the details for that office if anyone else wants to chime in. I can talk about that for sure. So the Office of Disability Services works with um, incoming students and current students who may have like an IEP or a 504 plan from high school. 
And so what you'd want to do is just go to disability.godtech.edu. Um, there is a link that talks about how you get started. And so you'll just fill out your information, upload in, any information that you have from a provider, psychiatrist, or um, anyone kind of similar to the like. Um, they'll have an intake appointment with one of the counselors. They'll talk about kind of what accommodations in the class may be helpful. <clears throat> Oftentimes it may just be um, extra time on a test, time and a half, to, uh, double time. Um, and maybe like testing in a quiet space in our testing center or one of our alternative locations. Um, but they'll talk through that. Um, you'll develop, they'll get a letter developed that will be shared with your faculty. Uh, and then you'll have a conversation with your faculty um, just about how those accommodations may manifest throughout the semester. So, um, and then uh, the Disability Services Office is there to support you throughout the process. Definitely. Thank you for those answers there, Linda and Colleen. Uh, this next question may be answered by either Curlin and Angeli, uh, but the question is, do parents get their own online portal similar to the student so that we can keep up, up with tasks, payments due, et cetera? Curlin, do you want to go first and then I'll pop in after? Yes, I will. So yes, um, student, like I was explaining earlier with this um, authorized user, the student would be responsible for going to their student payment portal and signing the parent up um, to give them access to their own um, payment portal access as an authorized user. And again, they will only have access to the bills, printing on-demand bills or viewing any um, charges on the account. But and also if you go to a website, once the student gives the parent permission, there is the student pay and the parent pay. The student, the parent would now click on that separate link and then have their own access to the account. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ansley Sharp. I'm the Assistant Registrar for Registration and Customer Relations. So I'll be answering um, this part of the question for non-financial information. Um, and unfortunately, no, you are not going to be allowed to have any type of access to your student's record. Due to the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, that information is restricted to the student only. So you will not be able to call in or request access to grades, homework assignments, student conduct records, anything like that. That is going to be the property of your student only, and we will only communicate with your student. So now that you have this information, I do encourage you as a family to start the conversation now of how are they going to get you the information that you require. Uh, Georgia Tech cannot give it to you, but I would encourage you to start that family discussion now. All right, thank you, Carolyn and Ansley, for those answers there. Ansley, while I have you here, I have a question for you. Does GT have a FERPA form for parents to sign giving permission to ask questions about financial aid and bursar office? Perfect timing, James. No, we do not. Um, we are allowed per the Department of Education to decide if we will allow any sort of release, and we do not. Uh, so the financial aid and bursar's office, uh, the bursar's office particularly, um, does allow you some information to pay bills, as Carlene described. Um, but for anything else, no, there will be no sort of disclosure agreement that we would accept. Definitely, and thank you for that answer, Ansley. Uh, this next question is gonna be for Brett and Campus Services. The question is, if a student plans to check in for housing on the 16th of August, how do you go about getting an appointment? Yes, I just dropped into the chat um, the link housing.gotech.edu slash move in. And at, from there, there's some instructions. There's a link there to get students to log into the My Housing portal to sign up for the time they would like to move in. They need to do so by July 30th. That information is all on the, um, the link I just put there with some other instructions and lots of information about the move-in day. Definitely, thank you for that answer there, Brett. Uh, this next question is gonna be for Ansley in our registrar's office. The question is, my child is waiting for the AP score expected in mid-July for an exam that gives him credit for a tech course that is a prerequisite for a second course. Can he register today for the second course based on the expected AP score? So this is a common occurrence. Every summer we do run into this issue. Uh, so we will only be able to evaluate official scores once they come in in late July. 
Uh, we know they're coming in in late July, as do all of our academic departments. So what I would encourage your student to do today uh, is to speak with the teaching department of the course. So for instance, if it's an English course, they're expecting to get credit for English 1101 through AP. They want to register for a ling English 1102. They would need to reach out to the English department directly to see if the department will issue you them a prerequisite override permit. While I cannot guarantee any permit from any department, I do think your students should uh, seek out that permit today. Again, departments are well aware of when AP scores are coming in as well. So there are, there are going to be a few additional steps the student will need to take, but it is certainly a possibility that they can go ahead and register now. If not, we are opening up another round of registration in August. Certainly AP scores will have arrived by then and your student will have a full picture of what credit they've brought in. And thank you, Angie, for that answer. Uh, this next question is going to be for Curlin, and if Larry, you have any uh, answers here as well, that'd be excellent. Uh, how does GT handle payment schedule deadlines for students who anticipate part of their fees being covered by scholarship or tuition assistance, i.e. if those payments are committed but don't align to the GT schedule, will we have to pay and be reimbursed? Okay, so I'll go first. Um, so in most cases, no. If you have um, proof of the um, scholarship or say if it's a 529 plan, you could send that to bursa.as at guitech.edu. Um, we will be, we could use that for, um, if it covers part of tuition and fees, we will use that. If it's an official letter from the um, tuition assistant plan or from the outside scholarship, we can use that um, as and count that towards your percentage of payment. Thank you, Carolyn. Do you have anything to add, Larry? You're muted, Larry. Sorry about that. Uh, only one other thing to add in the off chance that, um, uh, you know, you may not have uh, completed requirements on time or you're waiting on a scholarship check that hasn't arrived or, um, you know, et cetera. Our office is the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid in some cases does offer um, emergency loans. So if you're unable to cover the balance, that's a short term loan with the 60 day loan term um, and it's a $20 fee for that. There is no other interest incurred. Um, so that is an option um, if students or families run into two issues with paying uh, or expecting funds to come in. All right, and we thank you, Carol and, and Larry for those answers there. Uh, we're going to bring it back to camp services with Brett. The question is, how will LLC interaction work if the students are in two buildings and cannot enter each other's buildings? So most of our LLCs are in individual buildings. So um, and the ones that cover two buildings are actually one building. So Matheson Perry is where global uh, global leadership is, and it's actually one building with two names. So um, that one's easy. Um, the one building, the one LLC that um, that is in two buildings um, would be um, Grand Challenges, and each of those buildings run their programs a little bit separately. So um, they will not need to interact with folks from the other building. However, they may have classes with them and things like that. There's lots of spaces on campus to collaborate outside of the residence halls, and so we will encourage folks to, to use those spaces. We limit movement within the residence halls because of bathrooms, because of kitchens. People are in much closer quarters and um, tend to let their guard down a little bit more when they're in their home setting. Um, so um, we're highly encouraging folks to wear masks who um, uh, who may not be vaccinated. Um, we're going to be encouraging testing. We're going to be encouraging vaccination. Uh, but for the residence halls where people are sharing space so closely, we are limiting it uh, interactions for the first month um, just within the building. LLCs are fully aware of this and have programs set up to to work within that um, parameter. All right, thank you for that answer there, Brett. Uh, this next question is, how often will students be encouraged to take the PCR test this year? I got that as well. So um, testing for COVID, the guide, we're following uh, CDC guidelines and some there's some information coming in now, things are changing uh, with the new variants that are coming around. So I don't have an exact answer for you other than to say um, we will follow those guidelines very strictly. We have very easy access to testing for our students. Last year we were asking students to um, test weekly and so um, I'm assuming that um, if with that need, if the need is similar um, with the variants that are coming around, we will continue to do so. So um, 
there is easy access to testing when students are on campus. Um, there's easy ac access to vaccines. Uh, Georgia Tech uses the Pfizer vaccine um, for students who have not been vaccinated as well. But um, we don't have the exact plan for the fall. Um, that, in that information is coming soon. Um, I would encourage you to check out the website health.gotech.edu. Um, there is this whole section on COVID-19, um, which um, is updated very frequently. And thank you for that answer, Brett. And while I have you here, I have another question uh, for Campus Services. Uh, the question is, how and when are parking permits obtained? Sure, I just added um, a link, driverseat.gotech.edu to the chat. That is where students will go to apply for a parking permit that is open now. So once students have a, a Georgia Tech username and password, they should be able to log in and, and select that. Um, around the first year residential areas, there is plenty of parking. And so once students know where they're going to live, that's probably where they would want to go in and, and apply for that parking permit because generally people want to live close, uh, park close to where they live. But um, that that process has opened up and driverseat.gotech.edu. Thank you again for that answer, Brett. Uh, this is a general question where anyone can answer it. But the question is, do you have any recommendations around establishing local banking relationships? My student will turn 18 just after move in, somewhat complicating matters. I can start since I'm live. There's plenty of banks around campus, um, national banks that have branches across the country. Um, you know, being an 18 year old starting a bank account, um, they are near college campus. It should not be too difficult to do so, um, I would say. So um, there are plenty of banks around us. I don't think any of us are going to give you a, a recommendation for one of those banks, but um, literally on campus, you will see banks and credit unions that students can um, go into their offices and the folks in those banks are ready to work with college students um, and help them start those accounts. Brett, do you know which ATMs are on campus offhand or no? I believe we have Georgia United Credit Union, um, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, SunTrust, um, and maybe a Chase somewhere. Um, I think those are the okay. ones that we buy. Okay, great. Definitely. Thank you for that answer there, Brett. Um, this next question here, is there any program office in GT to help students to search for summer internships starting from his freshman year? I could pass that one over to Linda. Thank you, we definitely do. That would be part of our career center and they work with all Georgia Tech students throughout their career and as alumni um, to both find internships and jobs while you're a student and also once you've graduated. So we do see first years that can find internships if we're talking about that summer after the first year. It typically is tied to having some prior experience in high school with research um, or the, uh, the job field and building upon that in their first year. So there are career advisors that students can meet with in their first semester to talk about their um, aspirations for that um, first summer and make some plans and be able to be ready for some of the career fairs that happen throughout the year to connect students with employers. Right, thank you so much for that answer, Linda. Uh, this next question is going to be for Ansley in our registrar's office. The question is, my son is planning to register at the in-person facet session on July 29th. Should we worry about class capacity availability by that date or will GT expand capacity to accommodate? Thanks. So a couple of things here. Uh, if your student is attending facet today, uh, they should plan to register today. They will not get a separate time ticket for another facet session. Uh, you should only have registered for one facet session, um, so you're not going to get a time ticket on the 29th. We do have a phase two registration for all students for the fall term later in August, though closer to the start. So we will be assigning time tickets on August 12th, which is a Friday. So your student is going to have another opportunity. That phase of registration will run all the way through until drop out is over in late August. So your student is not, it's not one and done today. They're going to have another chance to register. Um, I also want to make a point to say that departments are aware of when our facets are. So today they should be releasing some seats in some of our higher traffic courses like math and English so that every student who is attending facet has a better opportunity of getting the courses that they need. Um, so we, we have accommodated that and made plans to help your student get the courses that they need. And thank you so much for that answer there, Angeli. Uh, this next question may be answered by Linda and maybe Brett as well. 
Uh, but the question is, do most classes use paper textbooks or electronic? Does the bookstore sell used textbooks? Sure, I can answer that. And the answer is yes to all of it. Yes, professors use paper textbooks. Um, they also rely heavily on electronic resources, whether it's primary literature, webs, web blogs, you know, resources that are available um, on the internet. And I would say with the last year and a half of um, online education, there's been a much greater transition to looking for electronic resources and low cost resources. So there are a number of courses um, that have shifted from the large expensive paper textbooks to some of the online and free resources. The bookstore itself does offer um, both um, new and used textbooks and the used textbooks are there as much as possible, right? Not all books, depending on how heavily they're used nationwide, really have a large um, used uh, marketplace, but a lot of students will will turn to the used marketplaces online to either purchase or even rent a textbook. So I would also encourage students to explore um, the rental market and you can rent a, like an electronic version of the textbook for uh, four to six months and use it for your semester. And some students find that that's useful in courses that are outside of their major. A lot of faculty will still encourage students to think about purchasing textbooks that might be within their major that they may rely on for several semesters or years. Thank you for Thank that. You for that. Uh, uh, Brett, would you like to add anything or is, uh, Linda kind of covered everything? Awesome, awesome. OK, we're going to move over to our next question. Uh, what happens if, the, if a student does not have Internet access at the assigned housing selection day slash time slot due to travel? Can a new date and time be assigned after July 12th? We'll send that over to Brett. Yes, the time ticket that students have is actually just, it opens a time ticket for them. It does not ever close. So whenever they're able to log in after their time ticket starts, they will be able to, to select a room. It does not close, there's not an ending point. So as soon as they can get onto the, into our system after their time ticket starts, they should be able to select a room. And thank you for that answer there, Brett. Uh, we're going to keep it here in campus services. Uh, the, another question for you is my son is a US citizen. He doesn't have a US health insurance. I am not sure if he is part of the mandatory group. Can he opt for the mandatory health plan? Absolutely. Um, information is I'll I'll put it in the chat in a second. He can can get um, health insurance through Georgia Tech um, and I think it's United Healthcare provides that um, service and I'll put a link to that in the chat. Um, for some more information so that you can explore that um, as an option. And thank you so much for that answer, Brett. Uh, this next question is going to be for Larry and financial aid. The question is, if we are missing financial aid application deadline in the freshman, can he reapply financial aid for next year? Yes, uh, financial aid applications are submitted yearly. However, do be aware that um, we process financial aid throughout the year, so even if you miss necessarily a posted deadline, you can still submit uh, the Georgia Tech aid application and the FAFSA, and that would um, make the student eligible for whatever state or federal aid that they were entitled to. Um, so even if you have not done that yet, um, you can go ahead and do that, and financial aid is is available. Um, you know, institutional funds at this point have been exhausted. Um, uh, however, federal aid such as the Pell Grant subsidized and unsubsidized loans and the Parent PLUS loan um, are still available for students. All right, and thank you for that answer there, Larry. Uh, this next question may be answered by either Angeli or Linda, uh, but the question is, is AP Latin allowed, allowed as a humanities credit? So James, um, I will be happy to look into that. Um, all of our humanities requirements and approved courses to count for humanities requirements are set by the Board of Regents, which is our governing body with the University System of Georgia. Um, so I'll be happy to check on that for you, um, but that is certainly something uh, the academic advisor could assist with this afternoon. So if I can get it to you before the end of the panel, I'll drop it in the chat. And thank you so much for that answer there, Ansley. 
Um, this next question is going to go to Brett and Campus Services. The question is, while I see my students LLC has a director suite, it's not clear to me what the role of director is or whether a traditional RA is a part of the LLC slash dorm. Can you provide any insight? Absolutely. So LLCs are a partnership between um, um, residential life and academic services. So um, there is an academic portion and there is a living portion, a housing portion. And so the director is the one who is a professional staff member who kind of come, works with it in both areas to uh, make sure that things are moving forward academically and with students in the building. We also have hall directors who are residential life professional lab st staff members who also oversee those buildings. So there's a number of professional staff members who are overseeing um, what's going on in the building. So uh, hall directors from the housing side and the directors are kind of overseeing the, the entire higher program, including the academic portions of it. Um, there are RAs in the building as well. Um, all of our living learning communities are part of the first year experience, so they are a residential program within the first year experience, and all of our first year experience buildings have um, RAs uh, who are there to provide resources, safety and security, make sure that events are happening, make sure that students are feeling connected. So all of those pieces fit together within the living learning community. And thank you for that answer, Brett. And while I have you here, um, I have one more question for you. The question is, does Georgia Tech have facilities for self-isolating students or for international students when they arrive? Um, yes, we do. We are once again following CDC guidelines and for students who are coming internationally who would like to um, isolate when they arrive, we do we do provide that service. Um, there is some information at health.gotech.edu slash tech moving forward. That's in the link there. There's an FAQ section and it's for folks to reach out and ask questions. Um, also, you can reach out information at housing.gotech.edu. I'll put that in, in the chat in a second um, with specific questions about housing and how that works and how you need to uh, let us know um, if you would need to isolate when you return to campus. And thank you, Brett. And this last question here for you. What is the difference between dining dollars and buzz funds? Sure. So when you have a meal plan on campus, um, you have uh, our first year meal plans include um, sw meal swipes to get you into unlimited dining halls. So you can eat as much food in a meal period as you would like um, in, in one sitting. Um, there's also funds, dining dollars and buzz funds, which are included on those meals plans as well. Dining dollars are tax free money that can be used at GT dining run uh, establishments on campus. So let's say you have a weekday only plan and you're on here for the weekend and you want to go to the dining hall, you could use dining dollars to go into one of the dining ha halls. Or if there's a Georgia Tech dining run restaurant on campus, you could use dining dollars to purchase food in those spaces as well. Buzz funds are, uh, I, I think of them as sort of a declining balance debit card on your buzz card, which is our campus ID. And that's money that you can use at lots of places around campus that take buzz card. So vending machines, copy center, the bookstore, um, any of our dining facilities, any of the non GT dining facilities on campus as well would take buzz card. Um, there's lots of ways to use your buzz card on campus, including um, just off campus. Some of restaurants just off campus will take buzz card uh, buzz funds as well. So um, both dining dollars and buzz funds can be added to meal plans as well. So if you start to run out of them, it's easy to add, to add more on to your plan as well. And that information is all at the buzz card website. And thank you for those answers there, Brett. Uh, this next question Linda may be able to help us out with. Uh, the question is regarding computer requirements, are these needed for fall semester or can students wait until they are in heavier classes? Sure, I can answer that. Students will need a computer from their first semester. And so I would say um, if there is any um, financial need and support for that to reach out to the academic advisor or someone here may be able to also suggest some other dimensions um, for reaching that support, but students will definitely need um, a personal computer to be successful in class. All right, thank you so much for that answer there, Linda. Uh, this next question may be for Brett again in Campus Services. The question is, my son rides his bike everywhere. Does Georgia Tech have many bike theft problems? I see that uh, Colleen has added um, a link about from the police about how bike safety on campus and bike storage and all that that there. So we are in the middle of a city. Um, there have been bikes stolen from campus. I would not say we have a bike theft problem. Students should have a U-lock uh, when they're on campus and, and use the spaces around campus to store their bikes safely. Um, and lots of bikes on campus. There's bike lanes on campus. Uh, there's rental bikes on campus. Um, so um, I 
having a bike on campus is generally not an issue for anyone. And there is are many facilities on campus to um, make it convenient to have bikes on campus. But check that link out for more information about bike safety on campus. I may just add one thing is to encourage your students to wear a helmet if they are riding a bicycle, a electric scooter, a skateboard. Um, I will say that we often will have students to have an accident and they will not have been wearing a helmet. And so um, we obviously don't want that to have happen to your students. Uh, I know helmets sometimes don't look cool, messes your hair up, it's fine, we'll just go with it. We're just gonna go with the, the hat look or whatever. But um, I do see a lot of students that are navigating campus and not having a helmet on. So I would definitely encourage them to, um, to put one on or to get one. So, and it looks like in that link I dropped is a free helmet program. So they don't have access to one there is the ability to get one so that's the only thing i would add all right and thank you so much brett and colleen for those answers there uh, it appears that we do not have any other questions in the chat so we're going to go ahead and end this session here uh, we do thank you so much for our panelists for being here and we thank you all so much for joining us today for our parent panel discussion and please feel free to email our offices for additional questions that may have not been answered today Please stay safe out there and again, welcome to Georgia Tech.